In the 8th century BC, the Chinese Empire ruled by the Zhou Dynasty was going through hard times. Emperor Yu, who ascended to the throne at a young age, was not actually a ruler. He was only in his early 20s, never interested in the throne when he was younger, and now he had a huge empire to rule. To tell the truth, he didn't care much for the empire. When he became emperor, it was feared that the Xin Dynasty would revolt. For this, they married the daughter of the King Marquis the leader of the feared dynasty, to the new Emperor Yu. Thus, Yu would have a quiet reign. From this marriage, they had a son named Ji E Jiu. But Emperor Yu wasn't too happy about it. He was not someone who wanted to live that way. After a while, Yu became completely uninterested in his wife and state affairs. He was happy to spend his time with concubines and amusements. Then she fell in love with a concubine. The concubine's name was Bao Si, she had a melancholic character and was very beautiful. Taking care of Bao Si made you happy. You followed her feelings and had a child with Bao Si. They named their children Bo Fu. Regardless of the backlash, he declared that the new empress was Bao Si and that Bo Fu was the sole heir. The former Empress Xin and her son Ji Ijiao remained in the palace. This forced them to come up with a plan. They planned an assassination of the new heir, Bo Fu. The boy was still in swaddling, but he should have died. Because the new emperor had to be a descendant of Shun. And maybe he should have punished his father for what he had done. One night they tried to sneak into Bo Fu's room and kill him, but they were unsuccessful. The assassination failed, and when Emperor Yu learned of this, he sent the former Empress Xin and her son Ji Ijiao back to their lands. The leader of this province angered the King Marki, but it did not cause him to take any action. Bao Si, who rose from concubine to empress and whose son survived the assassination, became more melancholic and began to have psychological problems. I think this was the first anxiety in recorded human history. Emperor Yu was devastated by his wife's lack of laughter and was trying to find a solution. One day, along with the palace gentry, guards, and festive crew, Emperor Yu took his wife and son with him for a tour of Mount Li. Mount Li had a beautiful view. It was ideal for a stroll. While enjoying the ride on the mountain, Emperor Yu wanted to test their safety. He commanded the burning of smoke signals and the beating of help drums. Aware of the smoke, Zhou forces near the mountain and border guards belonging to other dynasties set out to help. When they arrived at Mount Li, they learned that it was just an exercise. Seeing the bewildered state of the soldiers, Bao Si couldn't help but burst into laughter. The emperor, upon witnessing this, was pleased with the situation. As a result, they went to Mount Li two more times. However, upon receiving reports of the situation, the provincial centers considered it an insult and ordered the soldiers not to respond to the smoke signals anymore. If the emperor was seeking a mockworthy army, they thought that the Zhou troops, who protected the countryside around Mount Li, would be sufficient for that purpose. Kralmarki, the leader of the Xinlands, was aware of this order and had been planning a rebellion for a long time. Perhaps by exploiting the emperor's vulnerability, a less violent rebellion could be carried out. King Marki spoke about his plan to the Zhang dynasty and the Chuanrong barbarians. The plan was as follows, when Emperor Yu went up to Mount Li and lit the smoke signals as if calling for help, they would pretend to go to Mount Li as if going to provide assistance. During this process, the Chuanrong barbarians would wear the attire of the provincial soldiers, and once they reached the mountain, they would completely surround it and massacre everyone. In 771 BC, when Emperor Yu ascended Mount Li for the last time, they executed the plan. King Marki did not want to lose a significant number of soldiers who could disrupt the stability in his own province. Consequently, he deployed the barbarians to the forefront of the battle. The small number of imperial guards did not receive any help. Emperor Yu, Empress Bao Si, the young crown prince Bofu, and the court officials were all killed by the barbarians. 
As a result, the former Crown Prince Ge Jio, who was the sole surviving member of the Zhou bloodline, remained. He and his mother went to the capital, Xi'an, and took the throne. King Marquis paid a large sum of money to the barbarians. No one wanted a bloody war with the Xin Dynasty, so they accepted the new emperor. It couldn't get any worse than before. The Battle of Mount Li came to an end. We learn most of the information about this war from a Chinese imperial historian named Sima Qian who lived in 200 BC. See you in the next videos.